Good morning, church. It's Tuesday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to 2 Kings chapter number 19. As we're looking at characters in Scripture, we can learn something about the amazing faith that is demonstrated by the king of Israel by the name of Hezekiah is where we're at. But also the great insight that Isaiah the prophet has. And we're going to cover Isaiah a little bit more down the line because he's one of the most amazing prophets. And we're going to look at some of his prophecies and the things that he says about the coming Messiah. But this Isaiah also was involved in protecting his nation as he would pray to the Lord and receive information from the Lord that he would give to the king. Now, the story is, as we've already told, the Assyrians have come from the north. They have dis destroyed us, the Syrian nation. Assyria has destroyed or conquered Syria. They've also conquered the northern kingdom of Israel. Now they're coming on Judah, and they're outside the city gates now. The army has come to the gates of Jerusalem. Uh, God has told them through the prophet Isaiah, don't open the gates to them. I'm going to send a rumor and the king will go back. He doesn't tell them that the king, king's army is going to stay outside the gate and they're going to lay siege, uh, not really attacking. They're just they're cutting off any food going in because that's what they generally do and starve you out. But uh, the, king's, the king of, of Assyria's army is encamped around Jerusalem, at least 185,000 men. And so Hezekiah prays. He asked Isaiah, what do we do? And Isaiah said, God has said, don't worry about it. The guy has blasphemed me and I'm going to, I'm going to take care of the circumstances. So we pick the story up in chapter number 19, verse 35. And it came to pass on a certain night, and we don't know how many nights they were camped around again, laying siege to Jerusalem that the angel of the Lord, and this word for angel is messenger, or it could be, uh, like in mine, it has a footnote that it's angel with an A. I mean, excuse me, angel with a capital A. Um, meaning, this is Jesus pre-incarnate. This is Jesus. Others say, well, no, it's an angel, a mighty angel, perhaps Michael the archangel, who could be the death angel. But either way, an angel is sent, a messenger is sent. It's a messenger of the Lord who went out, and notice in verse 35, and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when the people rose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home and remained in Nineveh. And then later on, he is assassinated, and it talks about him. Then it talks about the rest of Hezekiah's life in chapter number 20 as he prays that God would extend his life so he could repair and restore um, the things that had been destroyed because when these Assyrians came across the land of Judah, they were destroying cities and crops and doing their best to destroy everybody they could, and people were fleeing from the outer cities to come to Jerusalem to be protected by the great walls in Jerusalem. It was just a difficult time, and God does extend his life. So read about Hezekiah. The point is this. Uh, we, we can set our own destinies in part by the decisions we make. Now, I will never be president of the United States. I'm never going to have great responsibilities like Hezekiah. But whatever my responsibility is, whether it's just a homemaker, if you are a lady that's a homemaker and your domain is the home and your family and your children and your grandchildren, every one of us has some influence. How we spend our lives makes a difference. Hezekiah is one of the most wonderful examples of a godly individual in Scripture. We don't know much about him. He was not perfect, but he was a king that came in difficult times. His daddy was a terrible human being. His, his ancestors had pretty much destroyed the Judah. He was able to restore. He had authority, and he used that authority to honor God. He sought the Lord. He listened to the Lord's prophets. And by faith, he did that which was difficult to do under the circumstances. 
And here God sends an army, sends one man, a messenger, and destroys an army of 185,000 men. Now, I'm sure the army was bigger than that. And when these men began to drop dead from whatever disease or whatever it was that God plagued, that God struck them, maybe he just said drop dead. Maybe it was Jesus. And he just said drop dead. And as in the battle of, of Armageddon, these guys just dropped dead. And the rest fled, or maybe all of them died. We don't know. It seems like the king of Assyria certainly got out of there. But uh, God showed himself to be strong on their behalf because of their faith. And the nation Israel was restored once again. Unfortunately, Hezekiah did not do a good job raising his sons. And I see that often in Scripture, and that's a sad thing that oftentimes men like David and men like Hezekiah, Josiah is going to be the same exact way, that the people that succeed them in their positions uh, were godless. And I don't understand why. You know, the opposite is true of Hezekiah. His, his forefathers were godless and terrible people. Ahaz was a terrible dad, I guess, or terrible king. And Hezekiah winds up being a godly man. Same thing for Josiah. His daddy was Manasseh and terrible. Uh, or his, 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 his granddaddy was Manasseh. And his dad was even worse. Uh, so, but he winds up being great. But we can have an impact. And let's use our influence to glorify God and to make him known. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for stories like this. Stories which we believe with all of our heart. Father, we don't have to understand how 185,000 man army uh, met its, its fate. We just accept the fact that your word says it and it happened. And that, Father, you protect us in those ways. Help us to be mindful of your presence and never doubt that you always have our best interest when it's according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.